So we've already seen how action and condition nodes work. We've seen how to use the standard actions and conditions included in this scriptable object. And we've also learned how to write our own methods for the conditions and the actions. Now it's time to look for nodes that control the flow of information inside the tree. And the first ones we need to see are these blue nodes, which are uh, selectors and sequencers, and there are two versions of them. The first one is the normal selector and sequence, and the other one is the priority selector and priority sequence. We'll see the difference in a moment, but for now remember that as with every node, if you select it and click on the, on the question mark, it will open a window with information about it. So for example, this selector node, it says it runs its childs until one succeeds. So it returns success when it finds a child that succeeds, and it returns failure if every child of the node fails. It returns running if any child is running, such as an action node. And you can see that the root of every tree is actually a selector. This is the script it, it references. So, but uh, you can change that by simply putting another node uh, as a child of it. Um, now we can use the example trees that I have set up and that are included in the library. So for example, now I'm going to use the selector example. And because it uh, checks for input conditions and the input conditions check against the input system of the game engine, this example is meant to be used inside the game. So I'm just gonna run the game and you can see that right now every branch of the tree returns a failure because they check if a particular key on my keyboard is pressed. So here I check if the A key is pressed and you can see that the condition has the parameter A and the method, the, the methods holder is the koala input conditions and the method is the is key pressed method. So if I press the A key, now it will move to the origin. But it's already in the origin, so I don't see it moving. Now I press S, and you can see that it's returning um, running while it's moving. But once it gets there, it returns just true. And if I click now the letter D, you can see that it returns the first child that has either running and it returns running or success. So this selector will select, will try in order each of its childs and select the first one that either runs or succeeds and return that value to the, to the root of the node. We can see that the sequence does exactly the opposite and that means that it will run each node while it succeeds, but if one fails, then the whole sequence fails and it returns failure to the root. So I can um, run this in my game, and you will see that it will do, as the name implies, just a sequence of the nodes it has as, as children. Now, um, this is fairly simple, and these are the two main operations when you're working with behavior trees, selectors and sequencers. Usually selectors are used on the top part of the tree, so that you select which behavior is the current one, and then sequencers appear more often at the bottom of the tree, where you actually indicate a, a, a series of steps to be taken. Now, a Additionally to these simple selectors and sequencers, you have a priority selector and a priority sequence. So I'm going to load the example and run it in my tree. And you can see that the tree first checks if the, if the game object is higher than the number 2. 
and then it runs a move upwards to the number to to the height 3 but when this becomes true that it's higher than 2 then it will return true and continue to the to the following branch now what you can see is that this coroutine which is actually implemented in a standard action node it's running but the priority selector checks anyways if the previous nodes have changed their conditions. If they have, the priority selector will automatically stop all coroutines in any node that it's a child of it. I can compare it to a, a standard uh, selector and this selector first checks if the game object is lower than 1 and then makes it move to the height of minus 1. So what is happening here is that when it first checks, the game object has a height of 2. So it fails and starts moving. And then even though the value changes, it, it doesn't check it until the coroutine defined in, in the action node is finished. So you can see that the priority selector is a, a way to get around the, the kidnap that action nodes take on the root and it will always check if previous nodes have changed their status. Priority sequence do exactly the same and you can see it in the example. It, it does the same behavior but now I'm, I'm using a priority sequence and you can see here that uh, I'm, I'm still checking if it's higher than true, than 2 and the coroutine still moves it 3 units upwards but it's interrupted w when the first node of the sequence fails so the first branch is continu continually asking if these nodes have changed and the standard sequencer does not do this so it doesn't overwrite the move down behavior. I hope this is clear for you. Please check the examples in the package and use them in combinations with the coroutines nodes so that you can see exactly what they do. If you have any doubt you can leave it in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.